Competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! for the longest time really existed purely within Konami official events. The scene was pretty much dictated and monitored completely by the creators of the game, like in its entirety, with very little else really ongoing in terms of genuine, meaningful competition. Now enter ARG, otherwise known as Alter Reality Games, a card shop that took this Konami pretty much a monopoly and turned it on its head around late 2013 introducing with it the ARG Circuit Series, regional type competitive events offering something that Konami didn't. If you're not aware, Konami has an established policy that they don't, under any circumstances, give straight up cash as pricing in their tournaments. One of the major selling points about the Circuit Series became that it didn't abide by this rule, meaning players could play for some of the most valuable prizes in Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament history. Over the next few years, ARG went on to establish a genuine name in the community. With stream coverage, the community was able to keep up with ARG events constantly, watching along to see who and what was doing well at each individual tournament. This, along with not only fair turnouts, but an extremely promising competition, gave the series a great reputation for the super competitive players at the time. Extremely well-known players attended and facilitated these events, people like Jeff Jones and Patrick Hoban included, establishing these events as equal or even more valid than Konami official regionals. However, eventually, all organizations will run into road bumps and make decisions that, you know, their consumer base don't necessarily agree with. ARG was no exception to this rule, and early July 2015 brought with it an arguably stale format. With stuff like the Necroz Jin lot going strong and the player base pretty tired of it, ARG decided to take it into their own hands to quote unquote fix the format in terms of their specific events. On the 7th of July, ARG put out an article quote unquote announcing the ARG format. This piece established that the ARG Circuit Series that had previously run exclusively by the Konami legal ban list would be divulging from this and introducing balance changes that their chosen council felt was warranted within the format. Introducing not only more restricted cards, but actually moving cards off the list as well. Now, there were a number of hits on the list, but the bigger shifts were pretty much as follows. Firstly, Necroz was absolutely slammed on this list, seeing Jin banned, Lavalval Chain banned, and Trish Band. Along with this, Unicor also saw a limit to one. And now, because Cross was hit pretty hard, ARG found it justified to also tackle BA and Dahl pretty solidly, so they wouldn't just completely overtake the meta. With uh, El Shadal Fusion seeing a limit as well as Construct for the Dahl hits, and BA seeing Seer limited to one and Dante put to two. Now this list was controversial to say the very least, and a lot of YouTubers active at the time absolutely did put their two cents in on the topic. What's up YouTube, capital G? What's going on guys, it's Simo. What is up guys, this is Lintio. Hey, what is up guys? So today we're gonna be talking about this new format called the ARG format. The secondary, mar the secondary market might literally explode. Some of the decisions are just, I totally disagree with. What makes you qualified? to put these cards on certain areas of the Forbidden Unlimited list. They didn't need to ban Lavable Chain. They could have just banned Blaze Phoenix instead of banning Fusion Gate. I think that they're starting to overstep their mark and get this, get a little bit big headed. Now you can call this an attack on ARG if you so wish. I'm just expressing my opinion on what I think of them as a company or entity, let's say. And, and I have such a bad taste in my mouth. Now players saw this as ARG creating a fake format, claiming that it would make the Circuit Series pretty much an illegitimate joke. Overall, the most popular opinion I was really able to find and see was that the community thought that it was a bad idea to divulge from the Konami list, at least for balance purposes. A lot of people had complaints that a majority of the hits were poorly managed, specifically the lack of attention to Satellar Knight. And this definitely wasn't the only type of criticism that ARG were receiving. Another big thing that Team APS specifically talked about a lot was how the balance definitely wasn't perfect, but also the split away from Konami could potentially damage the community as a whole, pitting people against one another in disagreement about this. Now, on another end of the spectrum, it's very notable that ARG was still vending while hosting these events. This spawned another quite large concern, as people suspected that ARG had possibly ulterior motives in introducing this list. 
pretty much insider trading, hitting archetypes like Necros into what the player saw as quote unquote unplayability in order to potentially raise the card prices of stuff like the Satella Knights that were now being hyped up by the community in this custom format. Yu-Gi-Tubers like Alinthio specifically spoke about the potential possibility of ARG buying up a certain card as vendors at their events and then turning around and unbanning them in order to turn a profit, stuff like Necros of Trishula for instance. Obviously this was all speculation, but the community at the time was extremely concerned that this might be a major player in ARG's motives, and it didn't really paint the org in the best light. Now, ARG's response to all this different criticism was also absolutely not something that de-escalated the situation. The owner, Jim, is quoted on Facebook to have said, Get the fuck out of this group if you make ignorant statements like, The ARG format isn't real. Well, let me tell you, it's as real as the 40k we'll be giving away and prizing over the next month. It is okay to not like something or the list, but quit being fucking stupid. It is 100% real for ARG and those who plan on attending. Now, regardless of how you spin it, this is not a professional response. To respond to public criticism of your business, and honestly it only reflected poorly on the Circuit Series reputation as a whole. Now, regardless of the backlash that had ensued, the introduced ban list went into effect for multiple ARG events that have been recorded to some degree. The events took place beginning how the player base expected them to, really, with a lot of Satellar Knight and Top Cut. The community had harped on the possibility of a Teller takeover due to Necroj, Shadal, and Burning Abyss hits being so prominent, and then pretty much Teller Knight just completely dodging. And at least for the first event, with the new list, the community seemed to have been proven right, that the ARG list had simply not balanced the Teller properly. Funnily enough, this Teller Knight meta really only lasted the first tournament. Actually, funnily enough, uh, the deck everyone marked as neutered and unplayable on this list, being Necroz, won the next three events played under this list, holding large portions of top cut in all of them. In the eyes of a lot of the community that supported the ARG list, the ban list had effectively pretty much failed, simply pushing the player base playing under the ARG list into a Necros format with a different flavor than the standard. Now, regardless of how the events played out, eventually Konami introduced a ban list for the format that ARG felt they would be comfortable abiding by, and they then reverted the circuit series back to abiding by the Konami official card pool. Now, on the financial side of things, there was never any actual confirmation on the insider trading accusations, whether or not ARG actually created a market shift or profited off something like that are realistically pretty difficult things to prove and disprove, especially from an outside perspective. Now that's when the story of ARG's ban list does end. However, funnily enough, a situation like this has presented itself more recently within quarantine times through the Pro Play Game Circuit, a more or less modern rendition of the ARG Circuit series through a different organization. This list was met with a lot of the same backlash that ARG faced. People were upset over the splitting of the player base and the creation of a pretty much illegitimate format. Now, PPG followed a similar path that ARG did, following the list for some amount of time, but then eventually reverting to the Konami ban list. Interestingly enough, though, this time there was actually another circuit abiding by the Konami official ban list in opposition with the PPG. The luxury gaming series consistently picked up more attendance than the PPG events, possibly displaying how the ARG situation would have played out if there had been competition for their platform at the time. Now, the Complaints from the community towards PPG and ARG alike were all perfectly valid issues and concerns. When the community takes the game's balance into their own hands, there is always a crazy amount of room for criticism. As players tend to approach the game with much more bias and ulterior motives than we can really see coming from a corporate entity like Konami. The saga of player-created ban lists marketed as a legitimate form of competitive play I think is more or less a bad idea at this point in time. Especially nowadays knowing how much backlash the concept has gotten when applied multiple times now. But honestly, let me know. Let's talk about it. How do you feel about this saga of Yu-Gi-Oh! history? And do you really have any gripes with the decision of these circuits to apply their own forms of balance to the game? I'd love to get multiple perspectives on this issue as it's clearly been one of the more controversial points in the community's history.
I really hope y'all enjoyed the story. Big thanks to Law for giving me the idea for the video and helping me get all the information together. Um, in other news, I hope y'all are enjoying the more frequent uploads. I've had some free time and some cool ideas that, and I've just been pretty much too excited to like hold the ideas back and I've just been going to work and trying to get them out to y'all. Uh, the support has honestly just made my day every time I've uploaded. I, I genuinely can't say how much I appreciate each and every one of you who watches or just writes a nice comment. And until next time, guys, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.